and welcome to my channel Bevy with Beth. I'm Beth and in case you didn't know here on this channel I talk all about PCOS, the symptoms, how to cope with them and how my personal journey with PCOS is going. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in then don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to catch my videos every week and today we're going to be talking about the cyst part of PCOS and what role these cysts on our ovaries have to play with our diagnosis. <laughs> It was a nice sunny day, but I've had my windows open and I've got a bit cold. So I've gone for a really nice tea. It's it's absolutely brilliant. It's a turmeric one from um, Twinings. It's got turmeric and uh, star anise and orange. And I have just put that in a very little bit of boiling water to get it to brew, to get the flavours and all the benefits from the herbs. And then I've topped it up goat's milk. So it's like having it as a bit of a latte, basically. A turmeric latte is what I'm drinking, which is delicious. So yeah, as I said, we're going to be talking about the cysts part of polycystic ovarian syndrome. And the reason that I'm bringing this up because, is because it isn't as simple as it being in the name, meaning it's part of the diagnosis. In actual fact, 30% of people who get diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome don't actually have any cysts on their ovaries. And there are in fact 20% of women out there who do not have PCOS, but do have cysts on their ovaries. Uh, so where, where does this come, what is this all about? Basically it happened when they discovered cysts in ovaries and they connected the two and said, okay, so it's polycystic ovarian syndrome. Obviously, as time passed and, and we were able to do more kind of like live investigating rather than just dealing with deceased bodies, we were able to tie in that, in fact, although the cysts would cause infertility issues, they didn't necessarily cause a metabolic disruption. And so now, in order to be diagnosed with PCOS, you have to have the cysts on the ovaries too much of the um, androgens, so your testosterone and your DHA, and or missing periods. And I've spoken about that in a previous video as to how they actually diagnose us. And so what that means is it gets a bit confusing for people, you know, whether they have PCOS or not have PCOS, but you can have the PCO and it not be a syndrome. And basically it's the other metabolic symptoms that come along that turn it into more of a syndrome rather than just having polycystic ovaries but the cystic part doesn't actually tie in with whether it's PCOS or not. So they will always do an investigation. If they think you have PCOS, they will always try and find out if you have cysts on your ovaries or not. This is fairly key in the whole fertility aspect of it. So particularly if you're somebody who is interested in having children or you've gone to the clinic because you want to have children and this is how this has all come up, then they will want to find out whether you have cysts or not. And so they will do an ultrasound of your ovaries. And there are two different types of ultrasounds. You've got the over the stomach, um, very similar to a, a pregnancy scan. And you also have an internal scan. And most of the time, the internal scan will give a much more accurate understanding of whether there are cysts, how many cysts there are, and all of that kind of thing. Whereas the over the stomach one, you've got to have um, a really full bladder to kind of push everything high enough to, to get that reading. And it very often isn't clear enough. But the main reason I wanted to bring this up is it's a discussion I've seen often in other forums um, about PCOS is the idea that if you are a very young person or if you're a sexually inexperienced person that having the internal exam may give you a clearer result but it isn't actually necessary in order to diagnose you with PCOS. So if there's anybody there who feels uncomfortable about having an internal exam, 
then you're not holding back your treatment or your diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome by refusing that particular exam. You could definitely request to simply have that over the stomach one instead if it made you uncomfortable, or in fact, you don't have to have one at all since cyst on the ovaries is not the only way to diagnose PCOS. And because it's come up previously, I just wanted to make that really clear. What we're really looking for is that metabolic syndrome. So things like insulin resistance, high testosterone, high insulin levels in your bloodstream, high blood sugar levels, um, putting on weight and not being able to get it off again, infrequent periods, painful, like heavy bloating. Sometimes the cysts can be so big that they cause pressure within the body, so that kind of discomfort. And that's what we really need in order to get a diagnosis of PCOS. So I hope that's been helpful for you. If you have liked it, obviously don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it means so much to me to know that what I'm putting out is helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.